I've just bought this van in mint condition and I'm about to take a grinder and a chisel to the bodywork. Uh, I'm installing a split charge system, so I'm going to install a leisure battery uh, underneath, hopefully, the passenger, the driver's seat, and get a cable through some grommets into the engine bay and connect it to the battery and fuse it and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll look at the charge regulator a little bit later down the line. Engine battery is about 12.3 uh, volts. This battery is about 12.6. I've put in a current clamp and let's have a look when we switch it on, see what happens. Does a fuse blow? Is it all going to work? There we go. Seven amps passing from one battery into another. Absolutely spot on. The T6 has got the Euro 6 engine with a smart alternator and an AGM battery in the front of it. That's um, absorbent glass matte battery uh, and that battery it's completely sealed so no acid will spill out of it and all that kind of good stuff. There are benefits to this in the sense that the new battery that we're going to fit in here will lie on its side. I just want to show you a little trick that I stumbled across. Come with me. So we're going to get in here so a little uh, Fluke DVM, digital voltage meter, put it on DC mode here and then what we'll do is we'll measure the battery voltage. I'll just put one cable in there and one cable in there. Okay, currently we're at 12.7 volts, which is actually pretty good, but I've just driven home from work. So that'll probably be dropping off slowly as time goes on. I'll go and start the engine. So you'll see then that the voltage came up a little bit and the alternate and the uh, smart alternator decided that actually it doesn't really need to give this battery any more charge at the moment. It's quite happy with things the way they are. So over here in this corner, just move the meter, is a little plug, little plug socket. When you remove this, it removes the current sense and the voltage sense. So watch what happens to the voltage across this battery now. There we go off she rockets and she'll carry on up to about 15.8 volts somewhere in that region bearing in mind that I do currently have two of these batteries connected in parallel one big 110 amp hour and this guy here which is the 70 amp hour battery that's the smart alternator doing its job and that's how the smart alternator works and that's what's going to cause you grief if you want to put a split charging mechanism in in your T6. You're going to need something called a DC to DC uh, voltage uh, converter or boost converter. I'll, I'll explain more in a moment. Gone are the days of 13.8 volts from the old cars. Uh, in the old days when I was a kid it was 13.8 volts all the way. There was a regulator on the alternator and you could just charge your battery at 13.8 volts. Unfortunately, with the invention of smart alternators, what they do is they drop that voltage down to 12.5 volts. And the idea behind this is to improve fuel economy. And then while you're braking, as you're approaching your stopping point, they boost that voltage up to about sort of 16 or 17 volts uh, to give that battery a little bit of a pump up so that when the auto restart restarts the engine, dip the clutch and the engine automatically restarts, you get so ultimately you've got this whole 12 and a half volts to 17 volts thing to deal with here we are back working on the uh, converting a t6 panel van to a camper van um, so uh, there's a few things that you may notice some of the uh, more observant of you if you've watched the previous videos the previous videos are part one buying the van and removing the bulkhead part two installing a swivel seat and some led lights and right now um yeah can you guess what i'm doing uh, I'm installing a split charge system, so I'm going to install a leisure battery uh, underneath, hopefully, the, the driver's seat and get a cable through some grommets into the engine bay and connect it to the battery and fuse it and all that kind of stuff. And then we'll look at the charge regulator a little bit later down the line. It's been hard work. I'm a bit grumpy. <laughs> it's just taking me longer than I was expecting. Um, so uh, anyway, I have thankfully found a little a grommet. This is wastewater condensation uh, dripper. So that pops out the front uh, through the front bulkhead and um, a little rubber grommet basically. So we're going to run the cable through there. There's a few different ways you can do it. Looked at the forums and all that kind of stuff. And uh, 
To be honest, this looks like the easiest option, just uh, copying out through the top of this grommet. So I'll show you um, in reverse order how I've got this far. It has been a bit of a pain in the... Um, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been fun though. I mean, you know, I'm wielding spanners, I'm bashing up my knuckles, and I'm getting dirt under my fingernails, you know, all the usual sort of stuff. Um, so keep on watching and I'll try and show you how I've done it. So that's the bad boy right there. There's a little drip pipe here. Uh, so this uh, obviously is either for gases emitting some gases or for emitting some water. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and uh, gone through the top of that pipe. And this is the battery tray here with the battery removed. There it is. There we go. We can get that. Uh, we can get that cable up in the battery compartment. There's the battery on the floor. That's the battery tray over there. There's some more bits over there. Bits of dashboard everywhere. Fuse holder lids, screws. Uh, and then in the back of the truck, we've got the glove box. It's, um, yeah, <laughs> it's not exactly dead simple, this project. <laughs> It's a little frustrating in how he's getting a little angry right now. But not angry, just frustrated. But when I'm done, the satisfaction is gonna be fantastic. So what we're doing now is just reassembling the battery tray. So there's uh, a little bit of carpet that goes in there and uh, the metal battery tray that holds the battery in place or supports the battery itself. And then there's some plastic screens that fit alongside the outside, ensure that uh, none of that lot gets to experience too much of the outside environment. The battery itself, Big old beast, yeah, 70 amp hour, and it has like a, a little a rug around the outside of it. Keeps everything nice and warm, <laughs> even in the winter. And what I'm doing here is just uh, taking a, a little fuse holder assembly, and you'll note that I haven't put a fuse in it. And this is a good thing. I want everything to be in place, but I don't want the, the power going to the cable because I'm going to be routing that cable in, uh, in a few seconds. Uh, let's get the battery connected back up. Um, let's make sure that there's no fuse in there. Those cables should all stay nice and firm. Good 16 mil cable, multi-wire cable, no fuse in the holder. We'll secure that in place a little bit later on. Okay, so that's the terminals fitted to the battery then. The red cable has now been firmly secured onto the positive terminal. And there is the fuse holder with no fuse in it at the moment so that uh, no voltage gets into the, uh, into the red cable which is routed through the car. And there's the negative terminal. So getting back into the van and we need to put we need to pull the seat away so that we can route that cable underneath the carpet relatively easy it's not too hard a job to make this happen it's a bit fiddly but uh get that carpet out of the way and push that cable route the cable through through the well there uh, to the driver's seat and then th literally this is just uh, reassembling the the dashboard so I had to pull the whole dashboard apart, it was driving me crazy. Um, and this is basically just reassembling the dashboard, 
getting all of those uh, panels back in place and uh, getting the glove box back in and all that kind of good stuff. It's not too hard to do this. It's uh, it's like a little T16 or something like that uh, Torx driver. Don't forget the airbag connector. Uh, you want to make sure that that switch is, uh, is active. And, uh, you know, slap that back in place. And then what we've got to do is remove the seat the driver's seat and this is relatively easy and don't forget there is an airbag in that seat and uh, there's a connector that's associated with that so don't go walking too far off with that seat and yep there's that wonderful airbag connector and that just plugs into the seat itself there's the monster battery it really is an absolute killer of a battery but this is an AGM battery and um, the good thing about this battery is if you notice on the front of it, it does say totally spill proof and maintenance free, vibration resistant. Uh, there's a little uh, bracket inside the seat that you're going to need to remove. So make sure you get that bracket out of the way. And on top of that, there's a little stud. And that stud is the earthing stud. Well, at least I've chosen that stud to be the earthing stud. It looks like an earthing stud. I also chose to grind it down uh, because I thought perhaps uh, I might end up sticking two batteries in here. For now, I'm just going to go with the one battery. Um, and as you'll notice that if it sits upright, it's a little, it stands a little bit proud. So what you've got to do is lay that battery down on its side. And again, as I say, uh, these AGM batteries, are, um, absorbent glass matte batteries, uh, completely spill proof so you can lie them on their side. So I've ordered my CTEC battery to battery or DC boost charger. The problem is it hasn't actually arrived yet. A little bit disappointing but it is what it is. So what I'm going to do is just put a battery isolator switch in place between the two batteries. Okay woe is me. <laughs> my hands are black my fingernails are black my back aches but I've now got an isolator switch under the seat which is great oops bash me head um, another fuse in here on the back of this lump of wood and all we've got to do now excuse me all we got to do now is wire up the battery now one thing I do like about this battery uh, it has the adapters that means that you can connect these guys on or if you want to get rid of all that da -da -da, you can go straight onto there like that how cool is that anyway we're uh, we're making progress need to make sure that the battery's in secure maybe uh, some bits of wood uh, but uh, yeah we're uh, we're getting there right battery's dying on the camera sorry so we've got everything wired up and uh, at this point it's time to fit the fuse in place and uh, then throw the isolator switch and see what happens. So fingers crossed, wish me luck. Okay, so the car battery, the uh, engine battery is about 12.3 uh, volts. This battery is about 12.6. I've put in a current clamp. Apparently that's set to AC, which is incorrect. We want DC, zero the current clamp. And let's have a look when we switch it on, see what happens. Does a fuse blow? Is it all gonna work? There we go. Seven amps passing from one battery into another. Absolutely spot on. Everything's connected up. We've got a successful dual battery system that we can isolate manually. Happy days! So I'm aware that this has been quite a long video. So the next electrical stuff that we're going to do is actually, once the CTEC charger arrives, install that. And that'll give us the ability to be able to connect solar panels and also connect to the existing smart alternator on the Euro 6 engine. As always, please don't hesitate to give us a good old thumbs up, subscribe for more, and perhaps uh, pop a few questions or comments in the comments section down below. And this tells YouTube that we're sort of doing the right thing and uh, A, keeping you entertained, maybe offering a little bit of education, and perhaps showing you how not to do a job like this. <laughs> All right, cheers and beers, people. Take care. Have a wonderful, wonderful week and weekend.